good morning, everybody. If I could please ask the attention of the floor. Um, we are already running late, and I don't want to steal too much time from everybody's coffee break, so we really do need to get started. I have no idea how to do that. We have technical staff here, please, who can tune up the sound. We had the same problem yesterday evening, and it didn't work. Is this better now? There, there in the back? Super. Um, I've got one housekeeping issue, um, which I, I'm going to address again later that, this day, where we prepared forms for you. Um, actually, two forms. One is a questionnaire, and one is just a form. Um, this is about the concluding discussion of the plenary talks on the one hand. Um, we are having one hour and we are a conference, although um, you might not imagine this right now, looking into this room, we are a conference of 700 people registered. Um, and there is no way we can have a meaningful concluding discussion in an hour with that kind of attendance. Um, so, what we would like to ask you is, please use the questionnaire and write down a question or two you would like to have discussed in our concluding discussion on Thursday. Now, to be able to process all of this, we, we, I'm sorry to say that, but you would have to do it by today. So, um, please use the opportunity. Um, as I said, I will repeat that suggestion later today. Uh, another favor we would like to ask from you is that we um, very much want this conference not only to be about the analysis of anti-Semitism, but also about the catalog of policies against it we want to compile. Now, there's various ways to get your input on this. But one way, especially for those among you who don't, do not speak, who do not give a talk, one way is the second form, which is just saying, if you have any suggestions how to effectively fight anti-Semitism, please write it down on this piece of paper so that we can include it into our catalog of policies. Um, I know it's an unusual concept for a scholarly conference. Um, nevertheless, we are an unusual scholarly conference. And we would appreciate uh, very much your help on this one. Um, please allow me a very few, and I promise, brief remarks before I introduce our first speaker. The famous Conference of Vienna met from 1814 through 1815 to create a long-term peace plan for Europe after the Napoleonic Wars. It was the first time in history when national representatives came together on a continental scale to formulate treaties. Despite this singular importance, the Vienna Congress became proverbial for its festive type of diplomacy. Prince Charles Joseph de Ligny characterized it as follows. The Congress dances a lot, but does not move forward. Others were less polite in their characterization. A Viennese flyer from 1814 puts it like this. The Tsar of Russia loves for all, the King of Prussia thinks for all, the King of Denmark speaks for all, the King of Bavaria drinks for all, the King of Württemberg eats for all, the Emperor of Austria pays for all. <laughs> 
end of quote. Um, that our own conference might not compare in its importance, it is in its importance with the Congress of Vienna provides hope, though, that our work might receive a kinder reception than the one of the diplomats after the Napo Napoleonic Wars. Um, yesterday, three of our plenary talks were dedicated to the question of anti-Semitism in the three world religions. Maxine Grossman and myself spoke about the bedevilment of the Jews as an example for Christian anti-Semitism. Esther Wetman addressed the vilification of Jews in Islam. And Lawrence Schiffman asked for examples of anti-Semitism in the study of ancient Judaism. Afterwards, Monika Schwarz-Frizel documented how religious and other stereotypes of Jew hatred became generally more acceptable by way of their public communication through the internet. Today's plenary talks will follow not religious or electronic themes, but a historical one. Our speakers will engage with the history of anti-Semitism in antiquity, Eric Grün, um, in medieval times, Simcha Goldin. In modern times, Klaus Davidovich, whom I'm not seeing yet. Um, and in contemporary history, um, this is Mark Weizmann and Dina Porat. To draw such a historical line from the Jew hatred of pre-Christian antiquity through the Middle Ages and modern times until today implies an understanding of anti-Semitism that not everyone in this room shares. While we as organizers do not want to impose our understanding on anti-Semitism on all of you, we do think that a line can and should be drawn from the Jew hatred of antiquity until today. We might disagree on whether ancient and medieval Jew hatred should be better labeled anti-Judaism, while modern Jew hatred should be dubbed anti-Semitism. Nevertheless, the question as to what one has to do with the other has important implications for the main question of our conference, how to fight anti-Semitism. As yesterday's plenary talks pointed already to the importance of cultural and religious memory for combating anti-Semitism, today's plenary talks have the potential to highlight this matter further. Another important question of today's plenary talks might be if and how the working definition of anti-Semitism can or should be applied to ancient and medieval literatures. Beyond such questions, the theme of today's plenary talks can best be summarized most likely as this. What can history teach us about the nature of anti-Semitism and how?